All right, everybody. Uh, this is the last section. Um, section five for uh, differentiation of exponential functions. So, <clears throat> to come up with the formula to derive an exponential function, it actually combines what we did in section five three logarithmic functions along with something called implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation was section 3.3, which we actually cut out of the course due to the, uh, you know, the coronavirus situation. Um, that said, um, we're just going to go ahead and give you the rule here. Okay, So if you've got a function um, in the form f of x equal e, oops, e raised to g of x. So g of x is just something with x in it. So maybe it's e to the x squared, maybe it's e to the 5x minus 9, e to the 7x plus 3, whatever. It's e raised to something with x in it. Then the derivative is simply rewrite what you already have exactly how you have it don't change anything and then multiply times the derivative of g of x in other words the derivative of the exponent so that's the most generic rule um, and also just to make a note of this what if you just had just e to the x If I'm going to take the derivative of that and I want to use this rule up here, I would rewrite it. So I'm going to e rewrite e to the x, but then I multiply times the derivative of the exponent. Well, the derivative of x is 1. So you basically have e to the x times 1, which is just e to the x. So that's kind of a special function. That's actually uh, the only function uh, in which the derivative is the same exact thing as the original function. The derivative of e to the x is literally e to the x. So you kind of have two rules in one here. It's really all just this more generic rule up top, but the specific case is the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. All right, so let's take a look at some of these derivatives here. So uh, for number one, uh, if I want to get the derivative of 4x to the fifth minus 4e e to the x. Uh, 4x to the fifth, that's just something you'd use the power rule on. So that's going to be, I can't write here, 20x uh, to the fourth. Okay, minus 4 is a coefficient, so just like with other derivatives, we pull the coefficient down, and then you're just looking at the derivative of e to the x here. Well, as we said over here in this rule on the bottom, the derivative of v to the x is e to the x. So, there we go. So it looks like you didn't do anything for that second term, but you actually did. It's just the derivative of v to the x is literally e to the x. Alright, if you look at number 2 down here, um, this is not just e to the x. This is negative e to the 2x squared plus 5. So that's going to be this top rule up here. Okay. So go ahead and apply that rule. We rewrite it. Negative e to the 2x squared plus 5. And then we're going to multiply uh, times the derivative of the exponent. So I'm going to use parentheses here to indicate multiply. The derivative of 2x squared is 4x. Derivative of 5 is 0. Now, if you want to leave your answer in this format, that's perfectly okay. Hawks will accept that. Um, you know, a lot of people like to rewrite it without the parentheses if they can. So if you were going to do that, you've got your negative sign out front here. Take the 4x and just stick it out in front of e. So that's a little bit cleaner looking uh, solution there. This is what you'd call simplified. But again, Hawks will take either one of these.
So you don't have to do that. Uh, but I just thought I would mention it here. Okay, so there's both forms of our basic exponential rule. Number one, where you just had uh, to take the derivative of v to the x. And number two, where you had to take the derivative of e raised to something with x. After that, we're going to get into combinations. Actually, I take that back. We've got one more that's just a basic rule here. So look at number three compared to number two. Same exact idea. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Rewrite it exactly how it is. and multiply times the derivative of the exponent. Okay, so we want to get the derivative of 1 third x to the fourth, so 1 third times 4 is 4 thirds. That'll be x to the 3. Derivative of 5 is 0. Okay, so there it is. Okay, again, no need to really go any further than that. Okay, and now after that, um, we'll get into some problems where um, they combine some other derivative rules with the exponential rule. Okay. So let's see here. Oop, that's all on that page. Okay, so like number four here. If you looked at this problem, negative 9x squared e to the x, um, it's got an actual x sitting in front of the e. So what you have here is you have two terms, or two factors I should say, that have x in it. So back in 3.1 we dealt with that. Anytime we have something with x multiplied by something with x, you actually have the product rule. So you can call negative 9x squared first, you can call e to the x second. Remember, in 3.1, the product rule was first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay, so basically, we just need to go and fill into that. So first is negative 9x squared times the derivative of the second, so look at the second there. Second is e to the x. Well, what did we say a few, uh, just a minute ago? The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, so d seconds, just e to the x. Okay, plus second, which is e to the x, times derivative of the first. So now you want the derivative of uh, the first factor. going to be negative 18x. And again, you don't have to simplify, so if you want to type this in just like that, um, that's fine. Um, if you look at it though, um, the parentheses over here in the first term aren't really accomplishing anything. So if you wanted to drop those, um, you could. And in the second term, if you stuck the e to the x at the end, you wouldn't need the parentheses either. So if you want to simplify, um, you could write it like that. Okay. But again, Hawks will take it either way. Um, so leave it in parentheses just as you apply the, uh, the product rule. Or if you want to clean it up some, you can basically get rid of a bunch of parentheses. Okay, let's look at uh, number five next. So it's very similar to number four. Um, if you look at it, you have literally uh, something with x times something with x. So we can say 4x to the fourth is first and e to the 5 minus 7x cubed is second. So when we do the derivative, 
we're applying the product rule again. First, d second, plus second, d first. Okay, so first is easy enough. First is 4x to the fourth. d second, that's where this uh, changes a little bit from what you saw in number four. And number four, it was just e to the x. Um, here we have second as e to the 5 minus 7x cubed. So if we take the derivative of that, that's again simply rewrite it, e to the 5 minus 7x cubed, multiplied times the derivative of the exponent. So the derivative of 5 is 0, so that's gone. The derivative of negative 7x cubed is negative 21x squared. Okay, so that makes up uh, d second there. So let's fill that in here for d second. Okay. Keep going. Plus second, which is e to the 5 minus 7x cubed times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of 4x to the fourth would be 16 x cubed. And once again, in Hawks, you don't have to simplify. Um, just apply the rule and you can leave it just like that. Um, if for some reason you actually did want to simplify, again, there's no need to here, but if you wanted to, um, you could say 4 times negative 21 is negative 84. x to the 4th times x squared is x to the 6th. Still have e to the 5 minus 7x cubed. And then over here in the second term, just write the 16x cubed in front of e. That way you don't have to have the parentheses. So that would be a simplified um, solution like that. But, but again, what I have circled here is perfectly fine. If I was going to sit down and do the homework problems, I would leave it just like I have circled here. There, there's really no need to go uh, any further than that. Find a formula for y prime and determine the slope y prime at x equal negative 4. Uh, for the following function, y equals 6e to the 2x cubed plus 8. Uh, so this notation right here. Okay. Again, you may not have seen that before, so I'm going to rewrite this in a way that uh, might make more sense to you, something you, you've probably seen before. So instead of calling the function y equal this, what if we called it f of x equal this, 6e to the 2x cubed plus 8. Okay, so if we're using f of x, they wouldn't ask for y prime, they'd ask for f prime. And then this is just saying evaluated at negative 4. So we would put a negative 4 in the parentheses there. So find f prime and negative 4. So find a formula instead of y prime, we could say find a formula for the derivative. Okay. So in other words, what we're doing is we're taking the derivative and then we're going to plug negative 4 in for x. All right, so let's do that. All right, so if we look at our function here, um, it's just an exponential, so rewrite it. Multiply times the derivative of the exponent. So the derivative of 2x cubed will be 6x squared. Of course, the derivative of 8 is 0. Um, so that's gone. Um, now, it, it's kind of up to you. Um, you could leave it like this and plug the x in, uh, the negative 4 in for x, or we can go ahead and clean it up a little bit. I'm going to clean it up just because I think it looks better. So we've got 6 times 6x squared. That's 36x squared. And then you still have the e part. 
e to the 2x cubed plus 8. All right, now let's plug in our negative 4. So 36 times negative 4 squared e to the 2 times negative 4 cubed plus 8. Okay. All right, um, let's clean up what we can clean up. Negative 4 squared is 16. 16 times 36 is going to be 576. OK, let's leave this in terms of e. So e raised to negative 4 cubed. So that's uh, negative 64 times 2 is negative 128 plus 8 is going to be negative 120. Whenever you're dealing with an exponential function, uh, it's usually best just to leave it in terms of e. So you want your answer to be just like that. Um, if I actually type that into a calculator and tried to get a decimal, um, we'd get some really ugly uh, decimal number. Um, calculating it here. So what I have when I type this into a calculator is 4.416566 um, e to the negative 50. I've got something that looks like that. Whenever you see this on a calculator, what that is saying is move your decimal uh, 50 places uh, to the left. Okay. So we actually have something point zero 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 zero. Literally, there's 49 zeros there, and then you get to this four four one six five six six. So we're talking about a tiny, tiny number. We don't want to have to write 50 decimal places out. So leave it in terms of E. Leave it like this. Okay. All right, y'all. Um, that's all the material we're going to cover. So uh, don't forget about quiz eight. Um, quiz nine will help you get ready for the final along with the practice final. And then you have your uh, final exam itself. Good luck.